A very good evening to you all. Thank you for joining us tonight. edition of the news tonight. With me, Wadulo, Mark Arnold, Mogalu Muhammad on sign language with our father ado. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Brought to you by How to get points. Just use MTN to make calls, send SMS, load airtime, buy bundles, or pay for MTN subscription services. Everywhere you go, MTN. President Yori Kaguta Museveni launches destination brand. Premier Nabanja wants Iganga Hospital upgraded to Referral Hospital. Mistreated migrant worker happy to be back from Dubai. And Renzururu veterans warned of a misuse of a Mioga pant. Was brought to you by Everywhere You Go, MTN. Thank you for joining us. We now give you the news in detail. President Yori Kaguta Museveni has assured stakeholders in the tourism industry that government prioritizes the sector and is committed to revive it after the COVID-19 disruptions. Now, President Museveni was speaking at the launch of the Rediscover the Magnificence of Our Pal, a tourism rebranding initiative at Kololo Independence Grounds in Kampala. Uganda's highly anticipated launch of the Pearl of Africa brand has finally taken place at the Kololo Independence Grounds and graced by President Yuri Museveni. The launch of the tourism initiative is one of the many strategies being implemented by government to stimulate the demand from both existing and new markets to drive faster recovery of the sector that has been badly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. At the launch, sector players received assurance from government that tourism is still one of the top priority sectors for the country despite the dwindling revenue due to local and international travel restrictions that have kept potential visitors away from the tourist attractions across the country. Before the coronavirus outbreak in 2019, Uganda had set a visitor target of 2 million in 2020, a target that now needs aggressive marketing and branding to achieve in the near future. Dennis Igoa for UBC News. Yes, we'll have a more in-depth story later on at 10 p.m. Moving on. Prime Minister Robin Anabanja says that government will upgrade Iganga District Hospital to a regional referral hospital after assessing the number of patients accessing the facility. The Premier was also briefed about the unstable electricity supply, scarce drugs and mechanical damages of the X-ray machine at the hospital. At 8.30 a.m., the Prime Minister of Uganda, Robin Anabanja, was already at the gates of Iganga Main Hospital to check on service delivery and the status of the hospital. <laughs> the service providers at the hospital had no idea about the Premier's visit to the hospital. Upon her arrival, she proceeded direct to the female ward to check on the mothers who had given birth, where she also distributed financial aid the patient's premier Nabanja was on her way to Palisa, but decided to make an impromptu visit to Iganga Hospital. To commission uh, roads from Nakarama here, uh, Tirinyi, up to Mbari. Then we also have another road from Kamonkoli, uh, Kamonkoli, Palisa. Then after the tour of the facility, Premier Nabanji engaged in the discussion with the hospital heads who reported to her a number of challenges. This hospital is due for upgrade, but we have to go through the process, you know the processes of upgrade. Many who got wined by the Prime Minister's cash bonans at the hospital attempted to make their way into the hospital, but all in vain. A many who got wined by the Premier's cash bonans at the hospital attempted to make their way in, but all in vain. 
Hospital Administrator Ramadan Gaboli says in Nakavule Hospital is challenged with unstable electricity, breakdown of the X-ray machine, and scarcity of drugs. He, however, asked the Premier to come to their aid. It's about the X-ray. Yeah, for quite some time it has not been working. Some mechanical, technical problems, and we notified the ministry. The ministry sent uh, an engineer. He came on site and verified the machine. They promised to contact the supplier and uh, rectify the issue. Story compiled by Yusuf Abo for UBC News. Now as government plans to reopen the economy on Monday 24th, Minister for ICT and National Guidance has advised Ugandans not to relent, but continue adhering to the standard operation procedures. Minister Bariomonsi was addressing journalists at Uganda Media Center in Kampala. Government has announced that the economy will be fully reopened as earlier promised, though the decision might be reversed if the situation gets out of hand. In this period, adherence of SOPs shall be key to stop the further spread of COVID-19. We shall continue to require you to put on masks when you are in public and put them on correctly and consistently. We shall continue to require members of the public to wash their hands with soap and water or use a sanitizer. The night economy is expected to thrive again, though motorcycle riders, also known as border border riders, will remain prohibited to operate after 7 p.m. 5.30 a.m., the rest of the spaces which were under restriction will start opening. Nonetheless, truck drivers and crew members with negative PCR tests for the last 14 days will be allowed to move across borders. Up to 66 laboratories were assessed and approved. And I think in Uganda we have up to 22 laboratories which had been approved. So that if a test is carried out by a laboratory in Uganda that has been approved, then the results should be accepted across in Kenya, in Tanzania, and South Sudan. Vendors operating in Kampala are to be relocated to government markets to have an organized city. Nachitegera kundi government itayagala tuwele kukubo na hii obuzibubuli bumu jetu sindi kateri yoba guzi. Because those markets exist and there are people who go to those markets. And it cannot be true that if I go to Usafi market or St. Waliku Dembe, I will deliberately shun the vendors who have been relocated and just go to the other traders who have been there. It depends on what you are selling. Kampala City is both an administrative, business and political capital, which presents opportunities that attract city dwellers looking for a livelihood. Ivan Kahua and Miriam Womjisha, UBC News. The Ministry of Works and Transport has urged to the leaders and residents of Lango sub-region to call off the announced demonstration over the bad state of the Kamdin Lira Road. State Minister for Works, Musa Echweru, says that government is doing everything possible to make the road motorable. These are the details. The increasing pressure to the political leaders of Langosa region from the residents has compelled them to put government on notes of a planned demonstration. The pressure rises from the poor state of the 70 kilometer Camden Lira Road. To have the roads in Lao worked on, but this has fallen on deaf ears. And to my dismay, they're using mud mad to fill the potholes. Government through Ministry of Works and Transport has advised leaders to manage their anger as the road maintenance going on. Actually, the Lango sub-region that every effort is being made to make sure that we will make that road navigable and as, as we prepare to have permanent intervention so that this road from Malaba to Roro Tororos, Mbale, Mbale, Soroti, Soroti, Lira, Lira, Kamudin will be just like the stretch that comes, continues from Kamudin to, to Elego in the north. 
HRU says strict conditions attached to this project by the World Bank are holding the project from a complete takeoff. The conditions of the loan from the World Bank requires that strict compliance to the environmental and social standards and that conditions require approval by the World Bank by all environmental of all environmental and social safeguard studies, including those of acquisition of construction materials. If you are not happy, kindly express your disappointment in another way. The World Bank is co-funding the project with the government of Uganda. Currently, the source of aggregate for undertaking the work has been identified, and Uganda National Roads Authority is working with the bank to ensure that the material source meets all the safeguards required. Again, as I've told you, the World Bank is interested to every detail. Where are the source? Are there some challenges? And if there are challenges, have they been sorted out? The World Bank has since the Kamwenge Road incident tightened the conditions of its support, mainly the environmental and the community involvement aspects of any project in which it has an interest. Abdul Nasser Lubwama, UBC News. Now, imagine being motivated to work abroad only to end up living in a dehumanizing form of environment. This is the story of a 29-year-old Rebecca Ahimbi Siwe who spent nights on the verandas of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. It took the intervention of State House Anti-Corruption Unit to save her from the jaws of death. Henry Okrut with a report. Saved by the bell, right on time. This is the kind of happiness that these sisters expressed after one of them nearly met her creator before time. 29-year-old Rebecca Ahimbisiwe had been motivated to work abroad by her relatives. On reaching the airport in Dubai, she met the unexpected. Then he drove the car, he thought he was taking me maybe to Dubai town or what. But he took me to some far place, it is just near the borders of Oman. You just pass through the desert, uh, you take like two and a half hours to reach. If this were a movie, this was just the beginning of her predicament, going by what happened the first night and the next morning. I was tired. I slept on the carpet just like others did. I waited in the morning. They just give you tea in the morning with a small bread, lunch tea with small bread, just like that. That is their food. Not willing to take it anymore, she demanded to return to Uganda, only to be told like this. Then she was like, to go back, you have to pay six million because I bought you. Then I told her, you bought me? Then she was like, yeah. But me from Uganda, I knew I bought my ticket, I bought my visa, so I didn't know that there is someone who bought me. Her ordeal was unknowingly being shared by her family members, who were worried, having not heard from her since her departure. Then came the bombshell in this audio that she shared with her sister, Ruth Namara. She was crying, saying she has, she has been mistreated, she's miserable, she wants to come back home and she was like, please people in Uganda do whatever you can do so that we are saved. It took the intervention of her family to ensure her sustainability while in Dubai, as the process for her return to Uganda was still being worked on. They are telling her she can't travel because her passport has been blacklisted. So they tried and connected with that guy of the company, the agent, to do whatever possible so that my sister can come back. And finally, she was on the plane Something she nearly thought was a dream. I was so happy. On the plane, I could just thank God. Because it was very harsh there, because I knew I was coming to my home country, which is good. The day they told me your sister is going to fly back home, 
I couldn't sleep because I was waiting to see her. The State House Anti-Corruption Unit played a key role in her rescue. Because many people have died in those countries, but we thank the Anti-Corruption Unit that they did whatever possible to bring her back. This is just one of the many cases of migrant workers that the unit has rescued from dehumanizing treatment in the Middle East. We were able to coordinate with them, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of Labor and Gender, and our embassies in Middle East countries, and we helped, we helped the, the girls and the women majority, over 600 of them who were engaged in domestic work. Going forward, Nakalema has a word for parents. Before we let our children go, let us know what they are going to do, but also let's not allow these labor export companies to just take our children and not follow them up. From operating a retail shop in Uganda to attempting to become a migrant worker in Dubai and back to Uganda, the 29-year-old Rebecca Ahimbisiwe is now jobless. From this experience, aspiring migrant workers could learn a thing or two. Henry Okrut, UBC. In other news, prosecution has opposed the bail application of novelist Kakwenza Rukirabashaija, who is facing charges of offensive communication over fears that he might interfere with the ongoing investigations. Kakwenza's legal team, led by lawyer Aaron Chiza, applied for bail on grounds that he needs to seek medical attention from a medical facility of his choice. Now, this was all before Chief Magistrate Douglas Singiza at Buganda Road Court in Kampala. Social critic and a fiction writer, Kakwenza Rukidabasaidia, who is currently incarcerated in Kitalia prison, is struggling to get bail. Kakwenza appeared before Magistrate Douglas Singiza of Buganda Road Court via video conference from Chitalia Prison. The writer applied for bail through his legal team, led by Aaron Kiza, and presented by counsel Julius Galinsonga, David Lewis Lubongea, the NOP General Secretary, Ashaba Ann, um, and Job Kiji as his we have one By the grace of God, is healing, but it would uh, be in the best interest of his health, but his recapitulation and independent and access to independent and choice medication is done when he has the liberty. Prosecution led by Joan Keko objected to the bail application, saying the accused might interfere with the ongoing investigations. Regarding the medical report that I have just been served with this morning at the bank, paragraph four, Your Worship, is that he is he is all, he also had healing scars in his back, buttocks, thighs, hands, for which he is in medication. And it does not, in any of the paragraphs, indicate the causes of these scars. The presiding magistrate, Douglas Singh, is a set 25th January 2022 as the day for the delivering of his ruling on the bail application. No circumstances permit torture of a person, whether physical or mental. However, the torture of a person in police or military custody or any state custody is additionally reprehensible because the state is the primary duty bearer when it comes protecting people, when it prote comes protecting their property. Some of those who attended court, including politicians. But you don't, you never see uh, the perpetrators of these heinous crimes being uh, prosecuted before courts of law. So in essence, you have the victims being victimized. Uh, you find that the prostitution is uh, on, on the victims of torture and not the perpetrators of torture. And I'm also here to communicate that we are giving this court an ultimatum of up to Tuesday. Failure to do that, we are going to take action. We are going to stand with Kankwenza and we are not going to tire from fighting for his rights. Prosecution alleges that through his Twitter handle at Kakwenza Lukira, Kakwenza will fly repeatedly, disturb the peace of the president of Uganda and the commander land forces with no purpose of legitimate communication. Deborah Nama Monde, Nantongo Rebe. 
In another development, a city pastor, Alozias Bujingo and Susan Namakula Nantaba have been charged with three counts of entering into a void marriage. The accused pleaded not guilty at all the alleged offences. However, court granted them bail and each of them was asked to pay three million shillings in cash. Pastor Alozias Bujingo and Susan Namakula Nantaba appeared at Entebbe Grade 1 Magistrates Court this Friday morning. Pastor Lozias Bujingo and Susan Namakula Nantawa have appeared before Entebbe Grade 1 Magistrate Stella Okwang Pechula this Friday to take plea of the charges against them. The two are facing three counts of bigamy, contraction of marriage when already married, and contraction of marriage with previously married person. However, they both pleaded not guilty. Attempts by the city lawyer Hassan Malema Bidizi to have the DPP take over the case collapsed. As court has notified him to avail us information, and also in light with our letter that we had here, something. This magistrate had an application before her to strike out the DPP's letter to take over my case. She failed to fix that application. She did actually give it a date, but she's coming to court and entertaining the, the, what the DPP. Secondly, she's saying that once the DPP comes to court, then she has taken over, which is, of course, illegal. You, can, you cannot say you cannot hear me, then you come and take over. Pastor Lozias Bojingo and Susan Namakula Nantaba pleaded for bail through their lawyer, Ronald Rohindi, who informed court that the accused will not skip bail. Magistrate Stella Kwang Pechula granted each of the accused a cash bail of 3 million shillings with strict conditions. The next hearing has been fixed for 18th February 2022. However, city lawyer Malema Bilizi was seeming not happy with the way court handled this matter. There is an affidavit I filed yesterday. Now he refused, he did not only refused to refer to it, but even when I stood up and the magistrate was saying I cannot speak in my own case, she picked my affidavit and, and said, using my powers, I don't see any value in this affidavit. But this is my case. So what if I'm killed by Ujingo or by a, uh, 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 the magistrate wanted by Would the magistrate compensate my family? So this was a lawless proceeding. The magistrate, I think, I don't know which laws she was reading, and I think. They have to be challenged. Uh, even that bill has to be nullified. But, uh, I have seen that uh, my brother Malema Virizi may, may not be interested in this case. If Malema Virizi drops out of this case, I will remain with Teddy Naruswa Bujingo, whom I have seen around in court. So we can remain two complainers, myself and Teddy Naruswa. Bujingo's official wife, Teddy Naruswa Bujingo, listened in as all this was playing out. Pastor Lozias Bujingo and Susan Namakula Nantaba are accused of committing the alleged offences at Nyombi Tembo's home in Entebbe Wakiso district on the 7th of December 2021. Nantong Rebecca, Kagugu Besula, UBC News. We will now take a short commercial break and be back with more news tonight. Please do not move an inch. Stay tuned. School fees conveniently using MTN Momo. Dial star 165, star 80 hash. Enter the student code provided by the school. It will show you the student name and the class plus outstanding balance. Enter the amount you want to pay. Enter PIN. You will get a notification confirming payment. It's simple, secure, and convenient. Everywhere you go, MTN. Raising Voices. I feel happy when my father spends time with me. I hope all fathers will like my father. I want my father to reach out to all fathers. He knows how important it is to be a good father. I promise to help my father inspire other fathers to change. In this time of COVID, what is your promise to the children of Uganda? Because a violence-free childhood is everyone's right. Raising Voices. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get Freaky too. 
Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone network. Parents, guardians and caregivers, there's a confirmed polio outbreak in Kampala and therefore the Ministry of Health will conduct a national house-to-house polio immunization campaign. The first round of the campaign will take place from Friday the 14th of January to Sunday the 16th of January 2022 in all districts of Uganda. During the national house-to-house polio immunization campaign, health workers will come to your homes and immunize all your children under five years of age. Please note that the National House to House Polio Immunization Campaign does not replace the routine immunization. The polio vaccine is safe, effective and free. Parents, guardians and caregivers, please ensure that all your children under five years of age are immunized against polio during the National House to House Immunization Campaign from Friday 14th January to Sunday 16th January 2022. The dates for the second round of the campaign will be announced in due course. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF, World Health Organization and partners. Pay school fees conveniently using MTN Momo. Dial star 165, star 80 hash. Enter the student code provided by the school. It will show you the student name and the class plus outstanding balance. Enter the amount you want to pay. Enter PIN. You will get a notification confirming payment. It's simple, secure and convenient. Everywhere you go, MTN. For an event as big as the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations, you can't afford to miss out. So where do you go when you want to have a full AFCON 2021 experience? You go where everybody goes. When you're looking for the buy, you go straight to the source. So if you want to have it all, go all out for the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations with GoTV. Catch all 52 must-watch games live on Supersport on GoTV. GoTV. Love it. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart. Smartphone Network. Welcome back. You're still watching the UBC News tonight, broadcasting live from Nile Avenue, also on YouTube under the name tag UBC TV Uganda. So do care to share those links and let the world know we are live. Moving on in business. The Insurance Regulatory Authority has finalized complaints management system geared at improving on efficiency of service delivery. With its implementation, the regulator is optimistic of customer satisfaction and enhanced revenue collection. The Insurance Regulatory Authority has released its 2021 sector performance, which shows significant growth in the value chain. Various sectors of the economy had a subdued growth in 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects on production and productivity as well as low disposable incomes. The slow growth of the economy means the economy is not uh, properly uh, oiled, doesn't have the funds to make it move the way it should move. Definitely when the resources in the economy are uh, are limited, it means that even the consumption of insurance will be affected. But what explains the insurance sector growth amid the numerous challenges? We have made sure that the players put on market the products which address the needs of uh, the people. We have made sure that the players uh, come up with the needs which address the times. As you definitely know, under uh, some time we were under lockdown. People couldn't move, so we have encouraged players to use the digital platforms and they have responded positively. 
the total gross premium written through bank assurance agents amounted to 76.4 billion as at the end of quarter three of 2021. According to IRA, the performance was below expectation and called for the widening of the net. I therefore uh, have urged the insurance companies to engage more with the bank assurance agents to see that those products, the life policy, the education policy, the property policies, the, 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 the group life policies and many other policies need to be sold out. Increased cases of insurance fraud, market conduct issues and the slow pace of oil and gas activities, among others, are cited among bottlenecks to better performance. Dennis Igor for UBC Business. And that brings us to the end of our 8 o'clock edition. But before we sign out, let's take a look at our top stories. Brought to you by... How to get points. Just use MTN to make calls, send SMS, load airtime, buy bundles, or pay for MTN subscription services. Everywhere you go, MTN. Which tonight, President Museveni launches destination brand. Premier Nabanja wants Iganga Hospital upgraded to a referral hospital. Mistreated migrant worker happy to be back from Dubai. And Renzururu veterans warned of a misuse of Emioga funds. was brought to you by everywhere you go mtn well that's all we had time for for the eight o'clock edition but please do join us later on at 10 p.m for a lengthier bulletin my name is wadulo mark arnold mugalu mohammed on sign language catch you at 10. Welcome. It is time for the weather forecast from the weather center with our Semper Alex Kim. Sunny conditions dominated our skies across uh, most parts of the country. And this is so because of uh, the strengthening of the high pressure systems uh, to the north of the continent, as well as a weakening of the high pressure systems uh, across the south of the continent, uh, dragging the rain belt far away from uh, our region. Otherwise, uh, we do expect to see sunny intervals across across our skies most of the day tomorrow. Apart from areas within Lake Victoria Islands, where we do expect some chances of some light isolated rainfall well into the afternoon. Because of that, we do expect temperatures to be a little bit high at 31 degrees centigrade will be across Karamoja region. The nation's capital, Kampala, at 27, and in Kawale Highlands, we are forecasting at 24 degrees centigrade. Elsewhere across the globe, we are forecasting cold conditions for Moscow at a daytime high of minus 3 degrees centigrade with a falling snow, and for New York at minus 2 degrees centigrade uh, with sunny intervals. With that, we wrap it up. Stay tuned and join us again tomorrow, same time. Yes, a very good evening. You tuned into UBC TV. Welcome you back <coughs> from the news, and thank you so much for following. Now, every Thursday.